Welcome back to another edition of Components Breakdown. Today we're going to take a special look at the first official expansion to the board game Radis called Pied Piper, as well as the four bonus cards that will be released to Essen 2010. Now in order to play both of these expansions you are going to need the original game called Radis of course and I have already made a components breakdown video on that so I would invite anybody to go ahead if you want to learn the mechanics of the original game um, please visit that uh, components breakdown video and it will walk you through a play by play turn. Now in Radis, the original game, it is a two to four player game that takes about 45 minutes to play the game has some variable player powers and some light area control. So let's go ahead and open up the box here, show you what comes with the first official expansion as well as all of the bonus cards that will be released at Essen 2010. First thing you're going to notice is the box size. For those who are familiar with the original board game, the box size for Pied Piper is quite a bit smaller. Inside the box I've already taken everything out but it's a very nondescript insert and I've put everything back into the original Radis box so we're going to take a look in here and show you how everything will fit back into the original box. Now you're going to get a mixture of both the original and the expansions um, components so just be mindful that I will get to all the components I just want to show you how everything fits back in the original box. So the first thing you're going to notice is that there are four rule books that are included with this White Goblin edition and these are for each of the different languages that is included with the Essen release. Very easy to understand game um, which I first explained in my original components breakdown. I've also put the original rule book. Now since this is English I've just kept the English version up front and all of the tiles from the game from both the expansions and the original game will fit on the very top of the box so you won't have to do much maneuvering at all um, with the game itself. Of course the board from the original game. I have all the original components from the original game and then the components from Pied Piper are included in here and you're going to get some potions, some walls, some bishop tokens and then you're going to get some nun tokens as well which are the pink ones here. Now I am also going to show you which is included when you buy the game at Essen 2010 some new tiles and again, they're going to come with four different rule books for all the different languages. And the tiles are going to be Joan of Arc, Count Dracula, Merlin, and Robin Hood. And we'll explain what each of these does in just a moment. So let's go ahead and set up a two-player game and just show you um, all of the new cards. So now we've laid out all of the new components from Pied Piper as well as those cards that can be acquired at Essen 2010 and we're going to walk through them each individually and explain them. Now one more time, I did already do a components breakdown video on this and I will provide a link for those that are interested in learning the rules of the game and we're going to go over some of the rules but they're going to be more uh, tuned towards what the new cards are now. Uh, a quick note about the expansion, there are 12 new cards that are included and several new pawns that work in conjunction with those cards. Bringing the total cards now up to 18 from the base set and first official expansion. So there's basically now three new car or three total cards for each class or 18 total cards, which gives the game a lot of variety. Now, when you play Pied Piper expansion mixed in, you're still only playing with six total cards. And how the game works is you can choose one card randomly from each class, or you can just mix all the cards together and draw six randomly that way or pay, play with your favorites however you wish to play the game um, will be dependent upon which cards you choose to use so let's go ahead and just start with the cards and walk through them each briefly um, the first thing we're going to notice is that the peasant class or the um, we like to call it the wheat class here gets two new cards there is the baker and the surf. The baker is going to allow you on each of your turns to simply use the cards and we usually just tap them to place one of your tokens from the supply so one of your tokens here from the supply onto him and you can do that every turn and when someone else takes the card from you they have to place all those tokens into one region onto the board. Very nice card to have. The next one is the surf and he basically works a little bit differently. He works in phase C of the game and that's when the rats actually attack the areas. 
So for every rat that removes a cube to the board, you're allowed to put one of your cubes in. So say for instance, we're right here and this rat takes off one of their cubes, you're allowed to take one of your blue cubes and put it in there for every single cube, um, for every single rat that affects. Not every cube that's removed, but every rat that affects something. And then we have the original base one, and I've explained him previously. Next we'll go down to this class, and there is a new wizard and a new Pied Piper. The wizard just simply has a potion icon, and there are several of these nice thick cardboard potion tokens. And when you use him, just tap him and place him on um, a spot with one of your cubes. So you would take one of your blue cubes and put it right there. And simply what that means is if a rat attacks this area, you can expend the potion instead of losing your cube. It's quite nice to have. The next one is the Pied Piper, and he simply lets you to allows you to move one of your tokens and all the rats with them. So you would simply move one of your tokens away and carry all the rats that are in that spot with him. So he can lead people away or lead all the rats away or, you know, sabotage another player's area. And we'll get to all the bonus cards last. Uh, next we have the chivalry ones, and there's the crusader. And you're going to notice again, he's allowed to move the plague spot two spaces. The cool thing about him, though, is when he attacks someone, you can reveal all three, or up to three, of the rats simultaneously, and then pick what order you want them to be um, to attack in. So he's quite cool for attacking. Next we have the soldier. And he, again, is allowed to move two spaces. And when you uh, spread the plague, so if you were to move into this location, and you're going to spread the plague, normally it's two tokens, he allows you to add one additional rat token every time he spreads the plague. So that is the soldier. Next we'll get into the emperor and the queen. The Emperor has walls, and whenever you have the Emperor, you're allowed to place all three walls or move the walls if they're already on the board somewhere into the board. And you can place all three at one time. And what this allows you to do, or what it prevents the players from doing, is the plague token, the rat tokens, and cubes can never move past or through walls. Very nice for barricading yourself in, although someone else can take the Emperor card and then move those walls to their own adjacent area. The Queen is a little bit difficult to explain, but I will give it my best shot. She has two of these little symbols next, uh, side by side, and then a plus two token. What that basically means is if you have a contiguous area that's the largest on the board, you get to place two additional population onto the board. So let's look at the board, how it's set up right now. Yellow has three there, one there, one there, and one there. None of their areas are adjacent. However, blue has one, two, three adjacent areas. So they have a three adjacent area spot or contiguous area. So when they place their cubes, they have the largest contiguous area and they get to place two additional cubes into a region. So if they were to place here, they would place three cubes plus two more. That's how the queen works. She populates areas a little bit quicker. Next we'll go down here and we have the bishop and the nun. The bishop, when you play the bishop, you're allowed to move or place one of these tokens, just one, although there are two included, onto the board. And that prevents rats from moving or affecting those areas at all. Pretty nice guy to have. Next we have the nun. And when you play the nun, you're allowed to place or move all three of these tokens onto the board. And what they do is they reduce the population. So if I were to do that, it's actually going to show zero population because there's two nuns there and two cubes. So you just subtract them from the total population. Here we have three cubes and one nun, so the actual population there is only two instead of three. And the last two cards or new cards we have up here are the mayor and the courier. Start with the courier on the right, and he just allows you to switch two cubes anywhere on the board. So you can take your cubes or two of your opponent's cubes and just move them around. And a really nice one is the mayor. Now, if you have the most total cubes in an area, you're allowed to place one cube in every area when you populate. So, instead of normal population rules where I could place three cubes there, or one cube there, or one there. You look at the entire board and see if you have the largest total population. 
So I have it there so I could place one cube. I have it there I could place one cube. And I do not have it there so I cannot. So it just allows you to spread out and populate the board really quickly if you have the majority of cubes in an area. The last thing we're going to look at are the four bonus cards that can be acquired at Essen 2010. We'll go ahead and start here on the left hand side. Now all of them have some really nice themes to them and really kind of try to portray what these characters were about in, um, in myth and legend. So the first one we're going to see here is uh, Merlin and he allows you to take any one rat token anywhere on any region on the board and place it onto his card. Now if there was one already on there from a previous turn he's allowed to look at that token and then place it anywhere else on the board. So he pulls tokens off the board and places them but it does take two steps so someone can take that card from you and then place the token back or place it somewhere else. The next one we have is Robin Hood. He works a little bit uniquely. He works as a soldier so he moves two spots to attack. Um, the way he works though is in phase C and that is the phase when the rats are turned over. Before that happens he is allowed to take one of the majority uh, population tokens off and replace it with one of his. So for instance looking back at the board uh, before this rat token is um, shown he can take one of the yellow player since they have the majority and simply put one of his on. So he kind of steals from the rich and gives to himself. And the next one is Count Dracula. He's from the nobility. And the way he works is actually quite cool. Every time, if you own this character in front of you, every time an opponent's character is killed by the plague, you take that population token and place it on here. It does not go back into their supply, but instead it goes onto the Count Dracula card. And at the end of the game, the person that has the fewest number of tokens on here gets, as you see here, four points. And the second will get two points. Now in a two player game, it's just going to be four points for the winner and no points for the second place. But in a three and four player game, both of these people are going to get points for having the least amount of tokens on here. And as you can see, he has a little rat in his hand. Quite cool. And the last bonus card that you're going to get at Essen is uh, Joan d'Arc. And she works quite uniquely as well. She plays kind of like a mimic, kind of like she did in history. Uh, posing as a male but was actually a female and at the beginning of her turn she's going to simply take one of the rat cubes from the supply and flip it over and whatever that flag or banner number you see there is what she does so for a one and two she actually does nothing so she would do nothing that turn but if she has a three or a four she can mimic the king um, and the merchant or uh, the bourgeoisie class I guess if she gets a five or a, um, a five, she will become um, someone from the uh, one of these two classes. And then if she gets a six, she's going to become one of these two classes. And those classes that she mimics are only going to be ones that are in play in the game. So those are the four bonus cards. Um, the expansion is actually quite nice. It really kind of opens up the game to a lot of different variety and a lot of different tactics. Um, I've only played with the expansion four times now and I haven't got a feel for all the cards, but there's some really powerful cards in here. Cards like the Emperor, which I feel is really power powerful, and especially the Mayor. Um, the Mayor being the one that allows you to place one cube in every area that you have the majority. So you can really end the game quickly if you have a majority or spread out your tokens across the board. Um, so that is Pied Piper. If you enjoyed Radis such as I did and I really enjoy the game, I think it's one of those very underappreciated games, I think you're really going to like this expansion, especially the bonus cards. So thanks again for watching.